there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be covering a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that is uh, using reference to create illustrations. I've got some uh, old uh, etchings here by uh, an artist named Samuel Chamberlain that I'm a big fan of. He worked in the early part of the 20th century and did a lot of uh, etchings in uh, France of these old buildings. And what I want to do is show you how I can use this uh, type of uh, illustration as reference to create a fantasy illustration uh, something that just sort of popped into my head, and I'm going to go ahead and start to draw the outlines of it right now. I thought, what would it look like if you had a structure, a kind of building, or almost a, a group of buildings that was shaped like a gigantic uh, mushroom? <laughs> and it's the, the image of it sort of popped into my uh, head, and I thought, let's do this, because I just want to see what it's going to look like. And so what I've done here is created, you know, a super basic shape of a, a gigantic mushroom structure. And the next thing that I'm going to do is sort of divide it into sections. Now this is where it's helpful to have some sense of the structure of objects. Not so much perspective, but understanding, you know, how the lines, if you drew a line across the edge of this mushroom shape, how it would curve, uh, how the lines would become more tightly packed as the structure turned further away from you. Um, and you can kind of repeat the same thing down here. I'm going to divide this into sort of sections like so. And let's jump right into how would I begin to use photo reference. Well this one for sure, not photo reference, I guess it's uh, etchings reference by Samuel Chamberlain. This sort of section of the rooftop here I thought could be really interesting to try to replicate. And what I'm going to do is uh, begin to uh, create a rooftop that is sort of split into different sections. I think to me it would, it'll be more interesting if it's not uniform. One of the things that I love about um, Samuel Chamberlain's uh, etchings and you know probably just based on real life is the, the sort of wobbly look of stuff, all the imperfections of these rooftops. Uh, it, to me that's way more interesting than perfectly straight lines. And uh, that's my kind of concept with this, is to try to uh, get that organic uh, look to it. Now let's go back to this one that shows the uh, rooftop and look at the way this window projects out of the roof. That's something that I definitely want to get in here. And so I'm going to begin to sketch just right here real quickly a sort of um, window rooftop shape. And looking at that structure, you know, more than trying to just do this all from memory, it's very helpful to look at either photos or, in this case, an etching, to uh, show yourself what do these structures really look like. And do you have to draw exactly what is there? No. In fact, it's probably better if you don't draw exactly what's there, uh, because that turns into copying. And in a way, what I want to show you is that, you know, artists using reference are not just copying exactly what they saw. Like, for example, this window shape to me looks like some giant square hole almost, and I would rather my window shape look a little more like a traditional window. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom in so you can see the details of what I'm doing. Alright, so you can see how I decided to try to make my window, you know, with like shutters on the edge and make it a little more of a traditional window type of a deal. But I'm not going to get too much into the de details so early uh, in this illustration. What I would like to do is to start to add um, structures throughout based on uh, the reference illustrations that I'm looking at. And one thing that I see on a lot of these rooftops is these really interesting chimneys. Uh, again, sort of no two of, uh, are exactly the same. And uh, I'm going to uh, start adding that into my illustration. I want to make sure that I don't go too high out of frame. But yeah, it's a tricky topic covering um, reference. How is it that artists use reference? Um, and until you see it, someone doing it, like you're seeing in this video right now, you might not really understand to what, to what degree are you just copying exactly what you see in someone else's illustration versus changing it up and coming up with your own uh, illustration. Like I feel like this roof is going to be kind of uh, dull looking if it's just one big flat thing. So I thought what if I have a s sort of secondary area here that raises up out of it. We create a uh, 
maybe a narrow section of the building, a sort of secondary roof. And the fun thing about having decided to do, uh, here, let me, I'm gonna move my <laughs> camera over on the fly. Uh, the fun thing about doing this sort of organic, like I said, sort of wobbly looking uh, European style old building is that uh, I probably won't require a ruler at all for the entirety uh, of this illustration. Because if it's, uh, you know, if the, if the things are a little bit bent, then that's good. You want it, you know, <laughs> I want this to have that sort of organic feeling. Maybe the windows have, and I didn't even see uh, windows like this in my reference illustrations. I'm just, this is more of me just sort of recalling those kind of windows that have diamond shaped uh, struts in them. Struts is probably not the right word. <laughs> You guys know, me and my words, I never seem to uh, be able to find the right one at the right time. But anyway, I'm not going to show you the entire process of this, because uh, I do want this to get fairly detailed, and, um, you know, the video would go on forever if I tried to show every single step in the process. But let's shift the camera, and uh, let me show how things are going to be a little different below the roof line. Okay, so for this section uh, of the buildings down below the roof line, I want to start doing this kind of timber frame uh, look, and I think I may just make that unified all the way across. And so, again, this one, the quite complex uh, timber framing there, maybe almost a little too complex for what I want to do. So I'm looking, maybe looking more at uh, this one. I don't know if some of this stuff, I'm, I'm zoomed in so tight, I don't know if you get that. This, this is the one that I was saying was maybe a little too complicated, uh, although I'm still going to try to emulate some of that. But it seems to me if I, uh, if I decide to have each one of these uh, subsections uh, as if they were built at a different time or maybe built by different architects or something, that uh, we end up breaking the contour that I've established of this, uh, you know, mushroom shape. And I'm looking at this and seeing like this one, this piece of timber is quite wide here. And then there's, I notice this lower uh, section here, you know, uh, you can feel fairly certain that this was a form of architecture somewhere in France in the early, um, you know, 20th century. Uh, so, it, ra rather, rather than just winging it by looking at this uh, old illustration, I can get a certain level of authenticity to my uh, otherwise fantastical illustration. And I think that's really what makes a picture like this memorable and interesting, is if it, it seems impossible, I mean, the whole idea of someone building a giant structure in the shape of a mushroom, I suppose not impossible, but <laughs> unlikely, let's just say. But by, but by give, giving these sort of like authentic looking details, uh, again, I'm sort of looking at the, the way he drew this window here and, and using that as um, inspiration for the way I draw my window. Although I might go ahead and put some uh, divisions in here. Again, you're not necessarily making everything you do look exactly the same as what you see in your source illustration. But a lot, but like down here, for example, this, the, the, this sort of way that it uh, has different directions that the wood goes in, I think that's a sort of an interesting uh, bit of detail that I can get in there. I love that, you know, that this one isn't exactly in the middle. You might expect it to be in the middle, but it's off to one side a little bit. All of this stuff is just sort of fun to and then, you know, the more illustrations like this you do, the more you start to learn about um, forms of architecture and so forth and what the rules were uh, of those forms of architecture to the point where eventually you could maybe uh, do these illustrations without even uh, having the reference. But that's uh, sort of giving you the basics of what I want. I want to make, make sure that when I get over here, though, that um, because we're reaching the edge of the building, that uh, that I sort of pack the lines in a little more closely, and uh, suggest maybe there's a, a window with an open shutter right here. You know, and we could sort of see that 
over here at the edge. Of course the rooftop you could have expand uh, well beyond. You could use this sort of uh, shape that I'd done for this window and get one of them over here uh, near the edge of the building. Again, this sort of requires, I don't know if it's perspective so much, but just sort of an understanding of structure. The, what, what will this structure look like when it's seen from the side? Well, you're not going to see the window so much, right? You're going to see more of the roof. And, yeah, maybe that's enough. You know, you can imagine how I'm going to come in here. and uh, Maybe I will use this as an example, this more uh, ornate form here, and say let's, let's let this one have uh, that type of architecture to it. As if, like I said, these two sections were somehow built at different times. <laughs> and, uh, again, I don't know if that makes any sense architecturally, but... I'm going to do it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put in like a window. I noticed, interestingly, a lot of these shutters seem to, or windows, open inside, sort of like French doors. Uh, and I guess that makes sense uh, if you need to clean them and so forth. It's probably easier if they open inward. So that's what I'm going to do uh, with this and sort of darken in here. But I wanted to see if I could get a little more uh, ornate. You see all these little... Um, side struts here. I could maybe get some of those over like so. But again, there always seems to be a, like a diagonal one at some point, and I don't know if it was necessary or if it was just was uh, sort of the, the fashion of the time, but it seems like you always see these diagonal support beams coming in there. All right, well, I think you are starting to get a sense of how uh, I would use the um, reference to get authentic details into my illustrations. Um, what I'm going to do now is move one more time to show you how I'm going to do the base of the mushroom structure, uh, because this illustration right here shows us uh, that the, you know, the, the, the ground floor, the street level stuff, has a slightly different look to it. So let's go ahead and refocus and continue with that. All right, so when we get down here to the uh, base of the building, we do have to start doing things slightly differently. Um, and because it is, you know, the this whole structure is not so wide, I figure there can only be so many doorway entrances. I'm going to do one of them uh, right here. And having drawn the windows at a certain size, that means that my uh, doorway entrance has to be... Uh, proportional to that. But I'm looking at this where there's kind of an awning coming out and I thought that could be a nice uh, little bit of detail to put in here above the door. And uh, you know one thing I should mention is that uh, I got this I, these illustrations, these etchings from an old book that I bought years ago that contained almost the entire uh, works of this artist Samuel Chamberlain and I was gonna say that you know some, we think that you can get anything you want on the internet these days but the truth is that, that no a lot of stuff is still only available in books and um, you should you know if there's a particular type of architecture or illustration that you're fascinated by, it is still worth uh, buying the actual books to, to get access to that stuff. You can't find everything, absolutely everything online. I'm putting in these sort of supporting structures that would hold up the, um, you know, the mushrooming uh, uh, second level of the building, assuming that that just sort of makes sense. There's got to be something that's holding that stuff up. So I'm going to go ahead and continue that. And that's another one where, you know, as it turns away from you, you have to have some sense of how structure works, if not um, perspective necessarily. And I'm kind of winging it, to be honest, not really caring too much about what these details are going to look like. But, uh, like, in here, he darkened in the doorways so much that you can't even see anything. I feel like um, I don't want it to be quite that dark. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of... Uh, doorknobs here. Maybe the windows would be at the top in my imaginary doorway world. And then just sort of uh, decorative stuff down here. But yeah, you can see how 
um, every, every step of the way I'm continually going back to these illustrations and looking at uh, some of the authentic details so as to let that inform my illustration, give it now. Over here, let's say there's an awning, uh, if not for another doorway, for some sort of window, and we can't really see uh, the window itself because it's kind of turned away, but you know, getting a little extra details into that part of the illustration can also uh, be helpful. Well, I think it's time for me to pull back, and you're going to see me in time lapse kind of do all the rest of the line work uh, of this illustration. I can't decide whether I want to um, ink it or just sort of uh, scan it into my computer in pencil form. That might be what I do. And then print it out and just add a little bit of color to it in uh, printed form. But anyway, let's go ahead and refocus so that you can see the entire image as I complete all of the line work. Well, I'm pretty much uh, finished. I wanted to come in here at the end and talk a little bit about how, um, looking at these illustrations, I noticed that the the areas of complete blackness, you know, uh, are a pretty important part of the illustration. So I added a shadow down here, and I'm trying to look at different areas where, you know, he recorded the shadows of uh, probably noon-ish uh, sun, and uh, I'm trying to replicate that as well as some of the um, architectural stuff that I borrowed from his uh, illustrations or etchings, um, that somehow the illustration doesn't look quite finished without those areas of black. So you may see me going in um, at the end here and trying to beef up those dark areas just to sort of give the illustration that finished look. But otherwise, what I'm going to do is scan this into my computer, print it out, and I might come back and add just a little bit of color. I think this is mostly going to be a line art illustration, but I think it might look nice with a bit of uh, brown and maybe some of my beloved white gouache. Never can resist adding the white gouache uh, at the end. So let's go ahead and move on to that stage, uh, and uh, I will be right back. Well, I said I was going to keep it simple, but I couldn't resist bringing out a little bit of this pastel, kind of like colored chalk, just to um, add some roundness to it. It was looking a little flat to me. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I certainly enjoyed making it for you, and I would love to see if anyone gets inspired uh, by this video to try to do a similar such thing. You know, it doesn't have to be mushroom-shaped. You could have, you could make a building uh, in a different shape, see what you come up with, and uh, if you do, let me know, especially on Twitter is a great way to get hold of me, uh, if you decide to uh, do this illustration, this sort of fantasy-shaped uh, building idea, I would love to see what you come up with, and give it a try, see if you can find some old uh, reference like I did uh, to get some of those authentic details. Well, hold on, I'm going to go ahead and grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them, like The Drawing Lesson, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, Mastering Manga, my book on drawing in a manga style, three different books in that series, and my very latest book, The Two Pencil Method. I really cannot say thank you enough uh, to those of you who choose to support me by getting those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.